It should come as no great surprise that a Democratic Party which has abandoned working class people would find that the working class has abandoned them. And that is my colleague Anna Kasparian reading an open letter Bernie Sanders just published hammering the Democratic Party. Sanders explains the Democratic election defeats simply and clearly. While the Democratic leadership defends the status quo, the American people are angry and want change and they're right. He continues, today, while the rich are doing phenomenally well, 60% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck, and we have more income and wealth inequality than ever before. Unbelievably, real inflation accounted for weekly wages for the average American worker are actually lower now than they were 50 years ago. Related to that, inflation has been dropping every month for the past year. And during the Biden administration, working class wages have risen more than the cost of groceries and gasoline have risen. But a lot of Americans credit themselves when their wages go up and blame the government when prices go up. So the Biden-Harris administration got no credit for higher incomes and a lot of blame for costlier goods and services. And when seven out of 10 Americans say the country is headed in the wrong direction, the current administration pays a price, as Kamala Harris just saw. So what now for Democrats? Well, here, as Anna reads, Bernie Sanders gives us a roadmap. Despite spending far more per capita than other countries, we remain the only wealthy nation not to guarantee health care to all as a human right and we pay by far the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. We alone among major countries cannot even guarantee paid family and medical leave. In other words, our healthcare outcomes and the quality of our lives in America are worse even as we pay more. But did we hear about any of that the past year? Over the past several months, we've all been bombarded with texts and emails from Democratic campaigns. The Democratic Party has all of our information and the machinery to be in direct contact with us. As the news writes, can you recall a single message that asked you something? How you felt about $15 minimum wage or universal basic income? Hey you, this is Tim Walz's dog and I just wanna ask whether you'd be okay with free college and not having to fill out forms every time you go to the doctor. Or what if they educated people on issues or connected us with like-minded people oriented geographically or around issues and policies? Imagine having all of that machinery in your hands and using it not to build a massive grassroots movement in a constant effort to fight for humanity, but instead holding it in reserve and utilizing it only to tell you that, hi, it's James Carvel and I'm begging you to donate just $5 before tonight's made up fundraising deadline. How small is that vision? The Democratic Party did not inspire voters to fight climate change or income inequality or the excesses of Wall Street. Yeah, I know. Two months before the election, Kamala Harris had a plan for price gouging. But why didn't the Biden administration try to tackle it a year ago? Here's the answer. Because the Democratic Party establishment has a fealty to a lot of big corporations. Maybe not as many as the GOP, but it's still there. So we get incremental small efforts to tackle income inequality and hardships for the working class instead of offering big ideas and big ambitions that would actually inspire voters. Medicare for all? Polls show a strong majority of Americans, including a majority of Republican voters, support that. Free college tuition, majority American support. Raising the minimum wage, majority support. Taxing Wall Street trades to fund retraining programs for workers, majority support. On issue after issue after issue, the progressive policy proposals to address income inequality and improve health care, including the proposals from Bernie Sanders, have widespread support. And it's bipartisan. But instead of inspiring tens of millions of working class and lower income Americans who might have risen up if they'd been given something to be inspired by, Democrats were Republican light. In fact, Democrats created a coalition with anti-Trump Republicans simply to be against Donald Trump. So much energy was spent saying, Donald Trump is evil, Trump is a fascist. And while both are arguably true, most voters didn't believe it or they just tuned it out. And instead, they heard Donald Trump's dark rhetoric as more ambiguous. And they kept hearing from Trump, I'll save the economy, I'll turn around inflation, I'll make America great again. The economy does not need to be saved. Inflation is down. But Donald Trump's lies hung over the Democrats 
endlessly. And Democrats had nothing inspiring to overcome it. And instead of defending immigrants or even promoting the economic boost they bring to America, Democrats punted or agreed that, oh yeah, more needs to be done at the border. Even immigrants were left uninspired by Democrats. Although immigrants and Latinos in particular saw in Trump a man of action. And regarding the deportation actions that Trump has promised, a lot of immigrants seem to think it would not affect them. Keith Oberman just detailed the polling on his podcast. Asked by the pollsters from Siena, when you hear about this, do you think he's talking about you? About how bad immigrants are, how bad Mexicans are, how bad Hispanics are, how he's going to get them all removed? that they're poisoning the bloodstream. When asked by the pollsters, when you hear this, do you think he's talking about you? Two-thirds of Latinos said, oh, no, which is short for, oh, no, he's not going to eat my face. For those under 30 in this demographic, the number was, what, 71%? Oh, no, he's not talking about me. He means other Latinos. Trump won Latino males by 11 points, and I have two words to say to them. And they are on behalf of the Trump administration. And the words are, by now. He will deport people from the same place you or your folks are from. He will deport people who have the same names you do. He will deport your relatives and friends. And when he runs out, he will change the laws. And he will deport you and your parents and your children. Did any Democrats in this campaign speak as clearly and passionately to Latinos as Keith just did? No. Because instead of standing for humanity and decency and inspiring Latinos to support Democratic candidates, Democrats tacked to the center and agreed that, oh yeah, more needs to be done at the border. Well, here's what's going to happen now, just on the economy. The price of food and produce is going to skyrocket as Latinos flee even before the internment camps are built. The deportation effort that Trump is promising is going to cost hundreds of billions of dollars, so the federal deficit will rise again, further threatening America's economic health. And in taking 17 million people out of the U.S. economy, American productivity is going to drop, also bringing down the economy. On top of all of that, Trump's tariffs will make all foreign-made products cost more, further hurting the U.S. economy. The economic catastrophe that is coming might be so dire that perhaps Democrats will regain an economic advantage with voters merely by doing nothing but complaining about Trump and the GOP. But here's a better idea. Democrats should embrace what Bernie Sanders is promoting. Be aggressive in tackling income inequality, the minimum wage, corporate excesses, and CEO pay. Promote big ideas like Medicare for All. Give something voters can be inspired about, something that will give them more hope, something that will help the poor and the working class Americans see that Democrats actually do stand for change and for improving everybody's lives. Protecting the status quo has been a disaster. You and I both know it. Bernie Sanders is saying it. Now we have to force the Democratic Party to take action. I'm David Schuster. Thanks for joining us.